What do you think the five-year relapse risk would be of a patient with a 1.2 millimeter primary non-ulcerated with 0.3 millimeters of tumor in one sentinel lymph node? What do you think? Five-year RFS so, relapse free survival. So we so we don't so the uh, from the um, AJCC eighth edition we have the OS for these, those patients. We don't necessarily have the uh, the RFS. However, extrapolating from some retrospective data that have been um, done for this, the risk is going to be in an order, order about 15 percent or so. In that That's patient. exactly what I would tell a patient. Yeah. And the question is, would you take a patient with a 15 percent risk of recurrence over five years with way less? than a 10% risk of death over 10 years, would you put that patient on adjuvant treatment? Michael? I think that's a patient you could safely observe and know that if they recur, that hopefully some type of treatment in the metastatic setting would be helpful because after all this enthusiasm we have and have been talking about for these adjuvant trials, we're really only talking about recurrence-free survival. We don't have overall survival for any of these approaches yet, and I would be surprised if these really low risk patients do have an overall survival benefit of these adjuvant treatments now versus treating later because hopefully with that 15-ish percent recurrence rate, hopefully that wouldn't even happen right away. And I, it, it'd be very difficult to see a survival benefit overall in these low risk stage three patients, although we don't have data, we don't know about that. So yet. I will actually challenge that because the uh, AJCC, again, for the stage three A patient, it was melanoma specific survival. And the melanoma specific survival at 10 years is actually, you know, 88%. And so there's a 12% risk of dying of melanoma in those patients. And if you look at the pembrolizumab data, the hazard ratio in the 3A patients was actually 0.37. I mean, it's, it was hugely, you know, impressive. And but the, we have to remember that there was very few patients in that group. And if you look at the confidence interval, it actually passed one. Agreed, so, but at yeah. least it was on the better side of even the overall hazard ratio for the entire True, population. But, but, so, but, but hang on, guys. I'm talking about not, you're talking about 3As, and I think we all agree in the 3A category which in all of the trials that, well, there's only two, in 054 Keynote and Combi AD, you had to have a millimeter's worth of tumor. The patient I mentioned to you, uh, hypothetically, was someone with less than a millimeter. So the question comes down to, is there an 88% melanoma-specific survival at 10 years in a 3A with less than a millimeter, or so is it more? we have to remember, Jeff, that in all of those patients, then they went as part of the AGCC staging system. They all had a completion lymph node section. Right. So we first have to ask the question, then, in that 0.3 millimeter thin or, th or sort of intermediate thickness melanoma without ulceration, what's the risk of having additional lymph nodes with melanoma in them? And that risk is going to be in the order of about 15 to 20 percent. Even with a minimal disease Correct. burden in the my, in the sentinel node itself? Correct. Which is why I, my answer to your question was probably going to be unlikely, but I would talk about it with the Correct. patient. Because I have patients who come in, you know, come hell or high water, they want treatment. And I have others that are, you know, much more cautious. And I think I, I, that would be something I would discuss with them. So this, this discussion that we're having, you realize, is completely different than the discussion that you'd have with a patient that comes in who probably won't understand half of the statistics and the background that we're having. Uh, for me, we have a long discussion that says, we're not so sure if it will affect your long-term outcome yet. And there are trials that will tell us that. There are toxicities. There are newer trials with other combinations that may help you more in the future than they do now. For, for us, that may mean that you may not be wasting an opportunity by taking early therapy, or you may have better chances of doing well than what the statistics tell you now. And I, I always send the patient away to come back. And now we have the time to look and figure out more from your tumor, know your BRAF status, come back and have that discussion after you've thought about it. And once you get the BRAF data, how do you decide who's going to get adjuvant BRAF MEC versus adjuvant NEVO and, and soon I'm sure we'll have PEMBRO? How, how do you make that decision? Again, we have a discussion of those toxicities, uh, how it would affect their life, how coming into the clinic would affect their lifestyle, whether it's once every two weeks or once every four weeks, and the toxicities that come with combination targeted agents. They are not trivial. There are ocular toxicities, there are cardiac toxicities that are there. Uh, MEK inhibitors have other toxicities, although rare, that can be just as uh, morbid. 
in addition, you're clearly not in the office as much, but you're tied to your physicians more when the toxicities come, about calling back, about coming in, about uh, how we would then decrease and manage dose. So those are longer discussions.